Hey, what's up guys? This is Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To and I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, coming to you guys with a new video as well as a new product. Uh, that product is System Center Virtualization Manager 2022 and it was recently announced and released for download. It contains many new features, uh, one of which is support for VMware vSphere 7.0 and higher. So stick around, we're going to take a look at some of the new features of System Center Virtualization Manager 2022, how to get it up and running to get it installed, as well as adding in a vSphere 7 environment for management. Okay guys, so let's discuss what you need to have to get up and running with System Center Virtualization Manager 2022. So the web page that you see up on my server is the Microsoft Evaluation Center page. And from Microsoft Evaluation Center, you can have access easily to uh, System Center 2022. Now. Uh, the only thing you need for the Evaluation Center is just simply to sign up with an email address. So it does require a Microsoft login uh, to gain access to that. And then after that, you simply just download, in the case of System Center 2022, it's an executable. And it's actually not that large, a few hundred meg. Uh, so you just simply download the executable. And part of the process that will uh, discuss in just a second is just extracting that executable so we can then install the solution. Outside of having the uh, Microsoft uh, System Center 2022 installation, what are the requirements that you need to have on your server? Well, let me just level set uh, for a couple of minutes. So I have a uh, Windows Server 2022 uh, that is installed and fully patched uh, it's a 21H2 uh, release of Windows Server 2022. So I've got this running in the home lab. So uh, Windows Server, uh, then besides Windows Server, what do you need? Well, I'm installing everything on a single box. Uh, what you will need is a full copy of Microsoft SQL Server. Now, you cannot use the Microsoft SQL Server Express Edition uh, for this purpose. In fact, if you try it, which I did in the lab uh, before this video, if you try to use the Express Edition, uh, it will tell you during the installation of uh, VMM 2022 that it is not supported. It will not allow you to move forward. So what you need to do is you can also uh, grab an evaluation copy of SQL Server uh, 2019 or uh, whatever flavor there that you want. You need a full SQL Server. Outside of SQL Server, there are a couple of things that you will need for uh, VMM 2022 installation. Uh, again, it will stop you in the installation of VMM and say you must install these components if you don't have them. And the two others are you need the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit, and you also need the pre-installation environment add-on for the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit. Okay, so now that we have the prerequisites installed on our Windows Server, what's next? Well, when you download the System Center uh, 2022 uh, executable from Microsoft, you're actually going to get four files. What we're interested in for the purposes of this demonstration is VMM 2022. Now, once you ex uh, download the files, you will extract this installation. And I'm not going to go all the way through this, but what I have already done is extracted the installation to the root of the C drive on this particular server. So as you can see, I have that System Center Virtual Machine Manager directory with all the installation files contained within the directory, and we have a setup file. So let's execute the setup file. And as we see, we've got the splash screen System Center 2022 Virtual Machine Manager and we are wanting to proceed with the install of System Center uh, Virtual Machine Manager 2022. So we simply click the install link 
and we'll see files extract. And one of the main things that we want to look for is that we don't have any uh, issues or errors with prerequisites being noted. So hopefully that is not the case since we've already installed SQL Server as well as the Windows ADK. So I'm going to select features to install and there are a couple of checkboxes here. By default, if you select the first checkbox, the management server, it will select everything. So if you uncheck, you can just select the console if, that, if you just want the console installed. But by default, if you select the first checkbox, both are uh, selected. So we're going to click Next. Product registration information, click Next. And we now have the EULA. I would just say Agree checkbox. Note about diagnostic and usage data, so we're just going to click Next. Uh, Microsoft Update, uh, we're just going to say On since that is recommended. Click Next. Uh, installation location, we're simply going to leave the default here. We'll click Next. And we have a couple of prerequisite warnings, uh, and these have to do with insufficient memory as well as a pending restart. But as you know, they are warnings. Um, since this is a lab environment, purposes of the video, I'm just going to simply next pass this. So it does give you at least a heads up about some things that you probably need to take care of. But as you know, we don't see an error about SQL Server and we don't see the and any errors about the deployment toolkit being installed. So we're just going to click next. And here we're going to uh, enter our database information. Now, System Center VMM, what it will do is it will uh, it will install the database. It will create the database as part of the installation so that you don't have to do that manually. And as you can see, it already has populated Virtual Manager DB. And it recognizes we've got a local uh, MS SQL server instance. So we're just simply going to click Next. And it's asking us about the service account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just populate this with a uh, account that I'm using in the, in the home lab. And we're going to just select next. We're not going to do any of the advanced configuration with distributed key management. So we're just going to click next. And here we have the option to change any of the default ports if we so desire, but I'm simply leaving everything for the defaults for VMM out of the box. We're going to click next. Uh, also, it's asking specify a share for virtual machine manager library. So you can uh, change this default share name if you want. Uh, this is the default that's created for you. I am simply just leaving the default in place. I'm going to click Next, and we have made it to the installation summary. So here we can review our configuration, uh, note any changes that need to be made. Uh, but here I'm simply just going to click Install. So uh, VMM is installed, and once that is installed, we will look at the initial configuration. Okay, so we are back, and after roughly 10 minutes or so of System Center Virtualization Manager installing as well as the console, we come to a setup completed successfully with warnings, and I'm sure some of that has to do with the prerequisites and uh, other things that we saw during the install. So we're just gonna simply click close. So we have the dialog box that we log into our System Center Virtualization Manager instance. So I'm simply going to say use current Microsoft Windows session identity uh, since that is the user that I want to uh, continually connect with. And I'm going to check the box automatically connect with these settings. So I'm just simply going to uh, select the box, click connect. So when you first launch VMM 2022, uh, you're going to see the console that we see uh, up on the screen now. So it's going to default to this view and it's going to default to VMs and services uh, as you see in the lower left hand corner. But one thing I want to do just to play around with the new features is I want to add a VMware vSphere 7.0 environment to uh, the Virtual Machine Manager 2022 as that's one of the new features included with this uh, edition of the product. So to do that, what we do is we click on the fabric uh, node underneath the VMs and services. 
Then at the top left, you will see an infrastructure node. So we're going to expand that. And as you know, we have an option for vCenter servers. So we can click vCenter, not really any controls here, but if you right click on vCenter server, there is an add VMware vCenter server. So I'm gonna click that. It brings up the specify the vCenter server that you want to add wizard. Uh, so it's just a wizard that we're going to go through, specify credentials, just kind of the normal stuff. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to feed in the vCenter server information FQDN and note under the credentials section we have an enter the administrator account used to connect to the vCenter server. So I have yet to add any credentials so I need to do that. Uh, to do that you click the browse button to the right and note it says select a run as account. Again we don't have vCenter credentials uh, added to the system as of yet. So we click the button in the lower right, create run as account. This opens another box, dialog box here. So we're going to uh, call this our vSphere administrator uh, can type. And username is administrator at vSphere.local and enter the password. And we simply just click finish once we have that account entered and added. So now, as you can see, we've got a select run as account and we have our vSphere administrator listed. So I'm going to highlight that account. I'm going to click OK. And as you see, it's kind of grayed out, but it adds it as the administrative account to connect. Uh, I'm going to leave the security checkbox. Uh, it's going to connect in secure mode. And at this point, we simply click finish. Now, once we click finish, we get the expected uh, security certificate warning. I'm simply running a self-signed certificate on my vCenter server in the home lab. So I'm just going to click import on this. And as we can see, uh, the run as account completed successfully. And the now we have the add a virtualization manager task has completed successfully as well. So now what I'm going to do is close the jobs window that has uh, been brought up. And I want to point out something uh, that is encouraging uh, that we see. Our vSphere version is showing as 7.0.3. Now, in previous releases of System Center Virtualization Manager, we would have been unsuccessful being able to connect to a vSphere 7 and higher release of uh, vCenter server. So this is encouraging that we see that we indeed are able to connect to uh, that release. So now what we can do is we're still in the fabric node and we can click the all hosts folder underneath servers. So once we click the all hosts folder, we're going to right click and then notice in the context menu, we have an add VMware ESX hosts and clusters. So what we want to do here is we want to click that and it's going to bring up another wizard uh, that will allow us to connect to our ESXi hosts. Now on the run as account, we can select the vSphere administrator. However, I am going to create another run as account and I'm going to call this the ESXi root account. And we're going to populate this information as well and we're going to click finish. So once I've added the ESXi root account, I'm going to select that, click OK, and click next. Now, as you can see from the target resources, we are already pulling information from vCenter server. Uh, we've got our data center uh, displaying, we have the vSphere cluster, and then we have the four nodes, the vSAN nodes that are a member of this vSphere cluster. So what I'm going to do is we can click the select all button or you can click the uh, little checkbox. I'm not really sure uh, why they don't have checkboxes by all, uh, but you can just simply do either there. Um, and then notice uh, we've got the operating system managed as of yet is no. Uh, so we're going to click next. 
and it asks on the next screen where do we want to place these in our system center virtualization manager uh, hierarchy so we're just simply going to leave the default location here all hosts I'm going to select next uh, we see the summary of the operation and we're going to click finish and again the jobs task will uh, launch and we will see that System Center VMM is now adding the virtual machine host. It's refreshing the host cluster. Uh, the reason it does that is it reads the information from the host to see which virtual machines are running on each particular host. So we can close now close the jobs uh, task window. And as we can see, we have all four of the uh, ESXi nodes uh, from the vSphere cluster listed. And we can now see that we've got cluster 01 listed underneath the all host node. And now what we can do, since we are still in the fabric view, is we can now navigate back to the VMs and services uh, node. So lower left hand corner, click VMs and services. So now, as you can see in the VMs and services uh, view that we have in uh, VMM 2022, is we can see the virtual machines that are running in our vSphere cluster. So again, showing us that we have that connectivity, that interoperability with VMM 2022 in our vSphere cluster. So interesting, we can see all of the VMs. As you can tell, I have the vSAN file service nodes running. Uh, if you want to check that out, I've got a video talking about vSAN file services, uh, creating those uh, vSAN file shares. Uh, but as you notice, I've got a couple of traditional VMs. Uh, this Linux VM as uh, VMM 2022, there's something about the configuration of that uh, version of Linux it doesn't support, evidently. Um, and as you can see, I've got a, a Windows 2019 server as well. So just to show that we have uh, interaction between VMM 2022 and our cluster is we can do simple uh, uh, lifecycle operations and power management operations. So uh, I can power on the virtual machine. And if you notice, uh, we see the operation kick off. It completes successfully. Now we've got the VM powered on. I can power off the virtual machine. And as you can see, the task starts. We've got uh, interaction there. But note some of the options that we have. We've, uh, of course, power operations. Uh, we can clone. We can migrate storage. We can migrate virtual machine. Uh, store and library, checkpoints, uh, which we can create snapshots uh, from uh, VMM 2022. So lots of interesting things there that we can do. Uh, so if I had a uh, Hyper-V machine uh, that was also added into my fabric, one of the really neat things with VMM 2022 is you have the ability to migrate between different uh, supported hypervisor version. So like if you've got a, a Hyper-V environment, you've got a vSphere environment, you can migrate machines between those environments using VMM 2022. Now I'm oversimplifying that and there's some definitely some gotchas that can happen migrating between those two environments. But just to note that you have some of those capabilities and features that are open up with System Center Virtualization Manager 2022. Okay guys, that was a quick walkthrough of how to install System Center Virtualization Manager 2022. Many nice features that are included with this updated release of VMM 2022. And as shown, one of those new features is connectivity and interoperability with vSphere 7.0. So hopefully you've enjoyed this walkthrough. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you guys soon.